Hello, it's Wes. Super Wes, that is. In this video, I'm going to explain what the assist control mode is on the LTV ventilator. And it's pretty much a universal mode that on other ventilators also. The assist control mode is not very commonly used. And as a matter of fact, it's extremely rare. The only time you should see it used is if a patient is heavily sedated, if they're in a medically induced coma, and the doctor wants to control everything about how they're breathing, or if this patient is unable to take a breath on their own or to initiate a breath on their own. That would be typically a patient with a neuromuscular disease or a spinal cord injury. To go through each setting, first of all, the breath rate. This ventilator, in, in this mode, it'll give 20 breaths a minute, no matter what, or at least it's gonna to try to. The patient can initiate some extra breaths, but it will at least try to give 20 breaths per minute. On the next setting is tidal volume. And notice that it's illuminated, or it's bright, so it is active, as opposed to the pressure control. This, is, this number is dim, so it's inactive, so we're gonna ignore this and we're not gonna chart it. So it's gonna give 20 breaths per minute, but each breath will be 500 milliliters. Because it's on the tidal volume, it's gonna to try to ensure that you get that 500 milliliters of air. Right now, it's only going up to about 20 of pressure. But if you get congested or you cough, it'll push harder and harder until it gives you that 500 milliliters of volume. The only thing that'll stop it is this high pressure limit. Once it, if it does go up to 45, it will stop that breath immediately, let them exhale, and it will alarm high pressure. And it will try again with the very next breath to get that 500 milliliters of volume. So it's given 20 breaths per minute. Each breath is 500 milliliters, and the inspiratory time, in this case, is one second. That's how much time it's gonna give that breath over. Because we can give that breath really fast, or we can give it nice and slow. And it usually depends on how old they are. A neonate, usually they breathe really fast, so it's 0.4 seconds. A toddler to a tweenie, maybe 0.6 to 0.8. A teenager to an adult, one second or more. One second is pretty common. So we're gonna give 20 breaths per minute, each breath at 500 milliliters, and given over one second. This patient is either comatose or cannot take a breath on their own. But even if you have a spinal cord injured patient, usually their diaphragm doesn't work. So they usually cannot take a deep enough breath to stay alive or to get the amount of air that they need. But they, can, they usually have control over their accessory muscles and they can take a little breath, just a tiny bit, not enough to keep them alive, but enough for the ventilator to realize it. And that's what we use the sensitivity for. And in this machine, the sensitivity is in liters per minute. In this case, if, if this patient pulls two liters a minute of air, that will tell the machine that they want a breath. And in the assist control mode, it will give that big deep breath every time. But all they have to do is just tell the machine that they want it. And it will give them that big deep breath. Because we know that it, typically it's not in a situation where we can rehabilitate their muscles and they will be coming off the ventilator. This is usually a long-term solution or a permanent solution. So again, assist control is not very commonly used. It's typically seen in patients that are in a medically induced coma or that have a neuromuscular or spinal cord injury. And one other thing to note is that the pressure support is inactive in assist control. It, it's not active and we do not chart it. Okay, I'll be explaining SIMV and CPAP in a couple other videos. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.